Organometallics, the cheat codes of organic chemistry and the best kept secret from first semester orgo students. Given how much power these reactions carry, that's probably with good reason. Need to make this bond with this specific stereochemistry while shifting this alkene? There's a metal for that. Need to make these three bonds in one go? There is also a metal for that. Needless to say, there's a lot of useful organic chemistry that can be done by employing elements other than the handful we're used to. Today we'll be looking at a specific reaction that proves to be extremely useful synthetically, as it provides us with not only a five-membered ring, but also the means to carry out various additional reactions down the road. The Paulson-Kahn reaction is a 2 plus 2 plus 1 cycloaddition between carbon monoxide, an alkene, and an alkyne. This reaction is typically cobalt catalyzed, but other metals such as rhodium can be used in order to make specific reaction outcomes more favorable. Specific ligation can also influence reaction outcomes. The product of these reactions are cyclopentanones, which allow for both aldol and Michael type chemistry in subsequent steps if desired. The mechanism of this reaction is a bit intensive and has some funky geometries, so while we won't go step for step right now, it's worth noting some key aspects. Namely, the cobalt complex will initially drop three carbon monoxide molecules in complex with the alkyne. Then, the complex will associate with the alkene and incorporate it through migratory insertion. A carbon monoxide moiety will then be incorporated in the same manner. From here on, the rest of the steps are involved in the dissociation of the catalytic complex from the molecule, leaving us with the product. Regioselectivity is a key aspect of most reactions, and the Paulson-Kahn is no exception. Any given combination of alkene and alkyne can have up to four unique cyclopentanone outcomes under these conditions, so how do we determine which will be the major product? There are two rules we can implement to greatly simplify our method of answering this question, the first of which is that the substituted end of our alkyne will almost always be alpha to the carbonyl. This is the most valuable bit to remember, since both products with this connectivity are typically major. The second rule is that the substituted end of the alkene will also tend to be alpha to the carbonyl, which thus gives us this radioselective order for the possible reaction outcomes. Note that the preference for any of these outcomes can be altered with the appropriate ligation of the metal catalyst, providing us a means of obtaining the desired connectivity in our products. In terms of favorability, there are two main ideas for the intermolecular variation. The first is that terminal alkynes are preferable over internal alkynes. Although it is still possible to get good yields with internal alkynes intermolecularly, having a terminal one will meaningfully increase those yields. The second is that the alkene utilized generally needs to be strained in order to make the reaction favorable. Bridged bicyclics are a good example of a favored alkene reagent. However, the best way to make the Paulson-Kahn favorable is to have both the alkene and the alkyne in the same molecule, which brings us to the second variation of the reaction that we'll be learning. In terms of the overall reaction, the intramolecular Paulson-Kahn is naturally identical to the intramolecular version. It's still a 2 plus 2 plus 1 cobalt catalyzed cycloaddition that, again, produces cyclopentanones. This time, however, we will get two rings, with the second ring size being variable on our starting material. The intramolecular reaction has the benefits of increased regioselectivity as a result of extremely limited bonding options and favorability as a result of the reactive segments being in much closer proximity. When faced with the task of predicting the product of a Paulson-Kahn reaction, the process is relatively simple. Keeping in mind the trends we went over earlier, simply orient the favorable ends of the alkyne and alkene towards a carbon monoxide and draw on your bonds. If the reaction is intramolecular, it will certainly help to redraw the molecule in a way that makes the connectivity more apparent. Here's a practice problem to help you distinguish between the two types of Paulson-Kahn reactions we've gone over. 